I'm back and I still got my Starbucks cold brew that is about halfway through. Surprisingly, this is only like a dollar fifty Canadian here in Japan's convenience store, which is super cheap. And it's even cheaper than the canned coffees that you can get. So that's why I got a Starbucks decide this this despite despite being in Japan and knowing I should be trying more local brands but I just stuck with the cheapest thing I could find because I've been spending a lot of money these past couple of days. Um, I want to talk about watch spotting in Japan and I've been to Tokyo now, Tokyo, uh, the, the center of that Yamanote line and also more off the bean path. Uh, I don't know the exact city name here I went through. Basically my girl was trying to buy a bag and she found all of these secondhand stores and uh, I was following her around riding the trains with her and I don't really necessarily look at what stop I'm getting off at, what city, what uh, district I'm in because they're all just syllables to me. <laughs> no offense to the language, but um, it's hard for me to pronounce, hard enough for me to pronounce and also just remember them as another big task, big ask for me. Anyways, I saw a lot of Rolexes in Tokyo, a crazy amount. And surprisingly, I didn't really see a lot of uh, subs or any Rolexes with functional bezels. I saw a lot of Datejusts. I didn't see any newer Oyster Perpetuals with the colorful dials, or for that fact, even the older ones, like the 116 uh, triple O's. But I did see a lot of just Datejusts. Um, older and newer Datejusts, there were a bunch of Datejusts. There are also a lot of uh, Omegas. I saw two or three Speedmasters. I saw one reduced, I think, and then two manual one Speedmasters. One of them was by a guy on a leather strap, and it definitely had a Hestalite crystal because the crystal was beat all the way through. But it had a lot of character, and I think he was getting off work with his coworker, and so he was on the subway. And if you guys know Japan, it's like sweaty as hell here in uh, early September. Um, so I don't know how these guys keep these things on a leather strap, but he did, and he looked like an absolute champ wearing it. Um, I also saw a couple Panerais, uh, Luminor, yes, Luminor, because they had the strong lugs and also the crown guards. I saw two Luminors, both on dads, <laughs> and they were out with their wife and kids. Um, what else did I see? I didn't see any Breitlings, although there are a lot of Breitling boutiques. I've seen three Breitling boutiques here in, uh, well, one here in Osaka, two in Tokyo, and although I don't see a lot of Brightlings floating around on wrists. I think it's the brand trying to make a, a heavier presence. So maybe in a couple of years, yeah, there'll, there'll be more Brightlings on wrists. Um, what else did I see? I haven't seen any Seamasters. That's usually the, the, the one of the popular ones that people tend to wear, uh, at least in Canada. But no, no Seamasters here, just a bunch of Rolex. Um, I would say there's about 50% are Rolex with dials that I can identify. And then the other 50% are just me seeing the Oyster bracelet and be like, hmm, that's probably a, uh, an old Oyster date or a just. But even if I can't confirm that, the 50% of the Rolex with the dials that I have spotted are still the majority and people do wear a lot of Rolex in Tokyo. Now, in Osaka, riding the, uh, sort of the M, Mi, Mido Suji, I think, the Mido Suji line subway. I actually haven't seen many luxury watches. A lot of Casios, a lot of Seikos, and I guess it's uh, by, in comparison, it's a smaller city, it's slower pace. Um, but it's still very curious how once you get out of like the big city, you stop seeing as many Rolexes, the symbol of success, and you get, ooh, this is pretty cool. It's like a little park terrace. I'm gonna walk into it. Um, but yeah, that's me looking at what people have on their wrists. And yes, I have been very tempted to ask them for a picture, a sneaker picture, but I feel like that's not the right thing to do. And I don't want to not be able to find my way back to Canada, you know? So unfortunately, you guys will just have to believe me when I tell you what I've seen people wearing. And uh, hopefully the footage that I get at the watch shop makes up for it. You guys can see the background here. All right, I'm gonna have a sip of my Starbucks and uh, I'll keep you guys posted about watch, what watches I see here 
as I make my way back to downtown Bury Street. Quick tangent now that I'm at the park. I was at the convenience store last night after I just had Korean barbecue with Wagyu beef for dinner and I was pretty hyped you know I just had a lot of yabisu, I had a lot of kirin, asahi beer and so I was like hmm I want to get some sake tonight and so I went on to reddit the place where everyone goes nowadays for getting the correct answer of, of what you should and should not do you know the opinion based answers instead of just googling it because there's just so much garbage articles out there one guy's like uh, he's a tourist as well and he's like mm, what 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 sake should I get a convenience store would you guys recommend and then the top comment by an overwhelming amount of majority says one cup and I almost bought it until I unfolded the comments down and I saw the second comment was like this is the only answer and it had a lot of upvotes as well and the the original poster replied to it is like oh yeah you know mm, why why is it that popular is it that much better than the other ones by an overwhelming flavor, taste, whatever. And the guy replied to it, the, the guy who's at one cup, he's like, what exactly did he say? I'm gonna try to screenshot it, but he's like, all the park ojisans, which means older gentlemen, drinks one cup and it allegedly gives them shogi god powers. So <laughs> that made me think, you know, you know the og sounds that do like the morning you know kung fu stuff that warms their body up in the park they drink that stuff according to the poster and me being at a i guess semi park now makes me think do they really drink that type of stuff like it, it's 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 very hard liquor according to a couple other replies in the thread um i don't know i, I just want to throw that out there maybe i'll try one cup i ended up getting this like juice box with the oni on it and it was pretty good i didn't finish it um, but it was very smooth so maybe i'll go back and try the one cup when i'm in kyoto probably making my way out of the park right now um very important thing that i omitted to say i have not seen a single tutor on the wrist of anyone here in japan so far i feel like tutor just doesn't have a strong presence in japan for one reason or another i don't i don't know why like I was expecting when I went to Nakano to see maybe some used bezels um, from the Tudor Black Bay 58 925 that I can fit onto my Steel 58, but I, I didn't see any parts and uh, nothing on people's wrists either. I guess that speaks to the popularity of Tudors in Japan. Maybe people will see it as it is, um, a sister brand of Rolex, who knows. But uh, yeah, just reporting, no Tudors to be found. Moving up market to talk about your holy trinity, AP, PP, VC, and then adding uh, probably the German brands, you know, Alain Zone and uh, by extension, Glass Chute and Nomos. I haven't seen any of those. The former couple of brands are probably because they don't take the subway, they get chauffeured around maybe. Um, the latter ones just, I guess, German brands aren't as popular here. Um, Grand Seikos, yes, I want to talk about I want to talk about Grand Seikos as well because I haven't seen any Grand Seikos in person and uh, I don't know if that's just because I miss them or if people don't really wear them as much as we think they do um, I know there's a whole craze going on with Shohei Otani right now so <laughs> it's making me think that there would be more people wearing Grand Seikos and Seikos but I haven't seen any so far. This one is obligatory because I got a buddy who wears Zenith. So this is to you. I haven't seen any single Zenith in the wild here in Japan. And that might be something that you like, you know, if you're along the same vein as me where you don't like to wear watches that other people wear, um, then congrats, there's no Zeniths, not a single one out here. Uh, I don't think I've even, even seen many in the shops. No, no. I, I, thinking back to like Nakano and uh, Donton Brewery, I haven't seen a single Zenith in the shops. Adding Breguet to that list as well. And Gerard Perigo. And Piaget. And I guess I should mention my own holy girl at the time being as well. 
Um, I haven't seen any single Frank Muellers in the wild, despite hearing that it is one of Japanese people's favorite brands. Not, not on the wrist at least, but a lot of them in the shops. Immediately after I'm done recording this segment, I went back to my hotel to do some laundry and I saw the cleaning lady. <laughs> she was cleaning the coin laundry and she was wearing a Frank Muller quartz on a steel bracelet. So there you go. That's the only Frank Muller sighting I've had in Japan so far and probably will get to see. I mean, these things are like $20,000 retail, so I really don't know who's buying them. Thanks for watching this to the end. I didn't get to make an outro, so I'll just end it here. I'll see you in the next one.